sit back because it's nighttime and I started filming a long time ago. This is going to be a long video. All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to an actual range day. So we, before we get into it, I haven't worn this on the channel yet, but my new Boogaloo shirt, it's actually camouflage flowers, camouflage colors. I think that's pretty awesome. My girlfriend bought that for me. So big day, get, move, move Draco. Big day. I already gave Draco his treat. Lock the door. Got my keys. Oh, come on. Got too much stuff in my hands. Sorry, you're getting a nose and mouth video. Big day. Got a ton of stuff to do, talk about, and, uh, do some review footage of as you can see we're in the truck let's get on the road Guys, we are here. Oh, I hate it when I get behind somebody on that dirt road. Just blinds you. You can't see a thing. Oh, and here comes that guy right now. Don't know what he's looking for. Oh, let's get you set up. All right, so we're here. Uh, it's a little. It's there's gusts of wind, so I put a schmog over the over the uh, microphone. Even though it's got one of those fuzzy dead cats on it, I the gusts are pretty pretty wicked right now so hopefully there's not too much wind for the video today and tonight it is one o'clock okay started this 
whole thing. I started recording that just before noon, so it's been an hour since we've been, uh, since I got started. Today and tonight, uh, I have a few things I have to do. One of them is, uh, well, I'm gonna start trying out this We The People uh, Don't Tread On Me holster. Um, it's just like the gray one that you've seen me wear so many times and that I've had in pictures. It's the exact same holster, just a different pattern, uh, different print on it. So I'm just going to feature it a little bit here and there because I've really already reviewed this holster. Uh, so this will be in uh, a future video. But I am going to work with a little bit um, while We The People has, uh, as far as I'm concerned, really consistent quality. Um, you know, I have a number of holsters from them, as you guys know, and uh, I have no doubts that this is going to be a good holster, but uh, I must try it anyway. I do not take anything for granted, no matter how good of a relationship I have with a company. Um, so there's that. They sent me their um, Freedom holster, and this thing is the pretty much assuming it works well i've worn it a little bit i've done some dry fire stuff at home i got it for the g43 because they don't have a light bearing option otherwise i would have got it for the g19 uh, and my 43 is the only gun that i don't have without or is the only gun i i have that doesn't have a light <coughs> but um you can it's their first foray into this sort of an uh, attached appendix carry system but uh you see all these different holes all over it all over the place it comes as a whole package of you can separate the two where wear it just like the two pieces you see separately you can wear this and outside the waistband it comes with the paddle it comes with the standard foamy clips as well these branded foamy clips there's one of those breezes i don't know if you can tell but um you can wear the mag pouch inside or outside the waistband connected or separate you can wear the holster inside or outside the waistband connected or separate with different types of clips um and and uh, paddle uh, uh, paddles for outside the waistband and it is ambidextrous so you, it is also left and right handed it's the only holster that i know of that actually has all of that in one package for about the same price as uh you know another one of the mid-range or even high priced uh, um, holsters of this type that is just this type you know that is just like the tier one or the or the 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 t-rex or any of those holsters that are the appendix style with the plus mag they're a hundred hundred and thirty hundred forty hundred fifty hundred sixty bucks um, this comes in at less than the more expensive of those and it does everything. So assuming this is going to be of good quality uh, and good fit and good draw and all that other stuff, um, I don't think you can beat this. So I'm really excited to try this. It'll be my first time doing live fire with it. Um, wow, that wind. Another, another gust. This guy, this is my Radical Firearms. Um, I've had this for a very long time and I've been using this LPBO. This LPBO is from Easy Shoot. Uh, I it's probably a Chinese company. I haven't looked into the company much. I've really been paying attention to the, to the scope. I put a Monstrum uh, offset on it. It doesn't come with its own mount but it does come with a battery. It's red and green. Uh, etched reticle. The reticle is real cool. You guys will see the reticle in the review. One power is, it, it's real clear. I mean, this thing is super clear, super easy to follow. Uh, it tracks nice, not a terrible amount of, on one power, there's no fish eyeing around the edge. On six power, there is just a little bit of fish eyeing and it loses a little bit of the clarity. But today I'm doing the final review of this. I have probably five or 700 rounds uh, through this scope so far. 
and I've been super impressed with it to this point, especially for being something that's only just over a hundred dollars. So we're gonna do some drop testing and some uh, return to zero and stuff like that with that today. Uh, however, the rifle, we're gonna do just some diagnostic testing too. Um, the rifle, I've been having a stovepipe problem where the round, it's picking up a new round, but the spent casing is sticking out the ejection port stuck on top of the new round going in. Sort of like a double feed, failure to eject fully type thing. I put a new O-ring and spring on the extractor. The extractor looked fine. Uh, last weekend, I was having the same problem and it was grabbing the rim just fine. So uh, it's not the ext an extractor wearing problem. On Scotsman's chat last week, I brought it up and everybody said magazines, it's not magazines. I've tried multiple magazines, same problems. People said buffer, I tried it with, uh, I put it on this lower which has the Armaspec uh, captured recoil buffer uh, in it and it had the same problem so it's not a buffer issue. <clears throat> the only thing I haven't tried is a different bolt carrier group which I'm going to um, shoot it a little bit today see if it happens I'm sure it will. Oh and I pulled the handguard and and uh, gas block off and everything's fine there everything's clean um, the gas block was not loose, it was not misaligned, the gas tube is not pinched off, melted down, or blocked in any way, neither is the port in the barrel. <clears throat> so it's not a gas problem, it's not a buffer problem, it's not a magazine issue, it's not an ammo issue because I did, I tried uh, M193 ammo and I tried steel case, did it with both. Um, not a magazine issue, uh, and it's not a buffer issue. I think I already went through those. So the only thing really left to check, and it's not an extractor issue because I, I changed the extractor spring and uh, O-ring, which granted, and I will say it was pretty freaking wore out. It took nothing to take it apart. Um, so a little bit of diagnostics today. I'm gonna shoot it again. Uh, I've wiped everything out, wiped the chamber out, just to make sure that wasn't an issue. And we're gonna change bolt carrier groups. Um, and I have a couple of other videos uh, to do today. I'm gonna to do my best to try to record me recording some of those videos as well. So let's get into some of that. So first thing is first, let's get some ears on. And this is the first thing I wanna try out today. Now this is Steelcase Wolf. Um, I shoot it all the time. I shoot it primarily, I should say. Uh, thousands and thousands of rounds a year and uh, don't have any problems with it. So um, I'm not, I'm gonna say it's definitely not an ammo issue. So let's, uh, let's try this out. Let's get you over here. See, oh, and I'm trying also trying out this Spikes Tactical Warhog brake. I just put this brake on too. And uh, the brake didn't matter either. I took, last weekend I took the brake that had a three, a three port brake on it and I took it completely off and on and off and on to see if the brake was the issue and the brake wasn't the issue either. You are crooked like crazy. There we go. So, Let's try this. And there it is. Do that. So, what is in here right now is the spent case with a live round trying to feed. Spent case, live round. I was happy, I mean, the few shots I was happy with the break. Let's change bolt carrier groups. And try it again. OK. 
okay. And I'll wait for these people to drive by because guns tend to scare stupid people. <clears throat> I sure I'm glad they're going like a half a mile an hour to rubberneck what the fuck I'm doing. Hadn't made it through two mags to this point. I know those were those were only loaded 20 rounds, but I hadn't made it to, to, through two mags to this point. So um, that leaves me with that's warm. So I changed the extractor spring. I did not change the ejector spring. Everything else is tight. Um, so let me know what you think down in the comments section. Just go, this is a mil spec. This is the one. Okay, so a little history. Um, if you guys remember, if you've been following the channel for a long time, that Radical Firearms rifle is the one that in the first thousand rounds, the uh, cam pin, or no, the bolt broke in half where the cam pin goes through. They great customer service, by the way. I absolutely, uh, Radical Firearms, as far as I'm concerned, is the top of the budget rifles out there. With that said, their customer service was awesome. They sent me a new bolt, uh, complete with gas rings and the whole nine yards. I uh, popped it in. This is the same one. This is the same bolt carrier group. Uh, many thousands of rounds later, um, same barrel, same chamber. Uh, I do did put a different trigger in it, not because I needed to, but because AT3 Tactical sent me that three and a half pound two stage trigger. Love that trigger, uh, but the mil spec trigger was a mil spec trigger. There wasn't anything wrong with it. I didn't have any malfunctions with it. I still have it in a in a, a drawer at home, in a bag and drawer at home. Uh, but it's as much radical firearms as it was basically the day I got it. So, um, with the exception of the handguard and the trigger. Uh, yeah, and then through the te through uh, it was over gas, so I put an H2 buffer in it, and that same H spikes H2 buffer has been in it since the first you know thousand or you know two thousand rounds. Uh, great rifle, workhorse, just an absolute just workhorse. Um, this is the first real problem since then that I've had, so I think it's probably time for a new bolt carrier group. Um, or maybe just a new complete bolt. Let me go what you guys think down in the comment section. New bolt, just a complete bolt, which, I mean, they're almost half the cost of a whole bolt carrier group. So do I do, do go with just like a DLC or like a nickel boron? Uh, I know like Dirty Bird and all that from AR15.com or AR15discounts.com, I, I can get a like a nickel boron bolt carrier group for like a hundred bucks um or do i just try to repair this one and keep testing it my problem is ammo is expensive and i continue to test and uh you know this happens that happens the other thing happens oh you know what i should do good idea internet thanks for reminding me Going on. So, to the Duramag, so I put the OEM carrier back in the Radical. Let me see if I can move my camera here. <sighs> I really wish I had a cameraman. Anybody out there looking for a job that doesn't pay, but wants to do some shooting, spend some time out in the desert, and possibly get some free training out of it, let me know. I would love to have somebody out here. It's like twice, it's twice a month. Twice a month, usually on a Saturday, usually a Saturday morning. Today's a, just a, a weird one because I have night vision to uh, do a video on, but uh, yeah. 
All right. Huh? Okay. And one more time, that was what, four or five rounds? Three rounds, put the sharps back in. Load up those two new rounds. Or the rounds, the live rounds I took out. Okay, bolt didn't hold open. That could have been probably mag. Still not sold on those Duramags yet. Um, my favorite are the Surefeed, absolutely. But uh, as far as metal mags, but it ran all those. So back to the same question. Tell me what you think down below. New bolt carrier group or just a new bolt and keep shooting ammo until I get it right. Let me know. All right, so that's 50 yards out there. I don't even know if it's still in camera view. Oh, there it is. It's way out there. Is that, is that it right there? I can't tell because of the sun. But uh, that's 50 yards. And uh, going to do the part of the review portion right now. Let's beat it up a little bit. On the scope, I'm gonna go ahead and let it hit the ground once. All right, so I just got done with the testing of the, this LPVO, it's not loose. Nope, it's not loose or anything. As you can see, I've dropped it, done some dirty things to it. What I can tell you, because you're going to have to wait for the review, full review, to uh, know exactly what happened. I can tell you that with the drop test, it stayed still within what would be an A zone or a large A zone. Still definitely within the C zone, uh, but that lets you know that it did have some shift uh, when dropping it. It's unfortunate. Uh, I'm gonna continue to, I'm gonna clean it up, and I'm gonna continue to run it and things like that and see if maybe a different mount it makes a difference. It's got a Monstrum mount on it. Monstrum is actually an affiliate of the channel, even though I know I haven't really tried to sell anything from them. Um, they're budget stuff, and uh, but the the mount doesn't appear to be. I mean, I know it doesn't take much, but it doesn't appear to be bent. The scope did not come loose or anything like that. 
the reticle is still appears to be horizontal right it's three bars in it the reticle appears to still be horizontal um, yeah anyway on to well on to getting something to drink first and there goes all those empty casings oh I'm thirsty I know I should be drinking water I have lost weight though so as you know Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty on all charges awesome that is a huge win for self-defense uh, with that said there's a lot of people talking about it there's a lot of people making videos about it um, a lot of people making meme videos about it I mean Brandon Herrera made a meme video about it um, lots of people making posts about it and things like that and then Lucas from T-Rex Arms put this up on Instagram and I like the T-Rex Arms channel I think there's a lot to be gained from that channel I think a lot of his advice is sound I think a lot of his advice is opinionated and um, is subjective uh, not a whole lot of objective especially like his newfound hate of like the one reload one reel I think his his premise behind not doing a one reload one is retarded um, it is hands down the best way to drill to get as many reps in on a uh, reload drill as possible is that the only thing you do of course it's not the only thing you do um, and there's people out there talking about muscle memory and how it's going to cause bad muscle memory. No, it's not. Uh, but anyway, just because I like a person and their channel and even most of their products um, does not mean I have to agree with everything they say. And this is one of the more retarded things I think he said. I'm going to put it up right here. Uh, he said, the gun industry is filled with despicable people who seek to profit off of other people's success, pain, suffering, and publicity. People who never talked about K KR, Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, during the riots or throughout the year are coming out of the woodwork for a piece of the pie now that he's judged innocent. Pay attention to who wants to make Kyle a cash cow. It is times like these that show you who the real friends of the people are, the people who truly value community over the almighty dollar. And now, I don't recall T-Rex's uh, social media is being full of Kyle Rittenhouse um, updates being full of Kyle Rittenhouse um, um, you know day to day like for instance people like uh, Johnny B right Johnny B uh, his boom every it seems like every day he had a court update things like that um, even guys like Tim Poole court updates all the time uh, guys even even here within as the court case was really going guys like Ben Shapiro court updates all the time uh, and then of course there are a lot of the Second Amendment supporters out there who throughout the last year uh, has you know posted this and that and updates as they came out there was a long time that there was no updates but I don't recall T-Rex arms being one of those I could be wrong I searched through the Instagram at least and didn't see a plethora of these posts yet this little motherfucker is sitting here admonishing people for trying to cash in on Kyle Rittenhouse's innocence by posting a post about Kyle Rittenhouse to garner attention. I find that to be hypocritical and I find it to be just as dastardly as he is making other people out to be. Yes, there are people that are going to try to cash in on it, but how far do we go with this? How far do we go with this? How far do we go? Like, does Brandon Herrera owe Kyle Rittenhouse money, the money that he makes off of his gun meme review? 
Does that mean that that needs to go to Kyle Rittenhouse's family and to Kyle's uh, 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 cost of of the the court and all that? Because Brandon Herrera made the gun me emergency gun me review yesterday or today um, about the Rittenhouse trial. Does that mean the income off of that video needs to go to him? Does that mean that Lucas is going to give a a part of an income that he could best calculate? from posting that post to the Rittenhouse family. Because after all, that post wouldn't exist without the Rittenhouse innocence. I just think this is silly. I think, I think that people are going to, I think that people are going to make t-shirts about it, to bring awareness of it. I think people are going to make t-shirts about it, to fuck around and find out, you know, things like that. I think, you know, the, you know show the pedo the, the the pedo guy he fucked around he found out things like that are going to happen and it's not because they're despicable people trying to cash in on pain and suffering of others and the court case it's because number one it's celebratory it's a win for us number two it brings awareness to what's going on and sure there's going to be a portion of people out there that are doing it just for money but that's not what that post was. That post was pay attention to who is bringing this stuff up. Well, he brought it up. He brought it up. He used the Kyle Rittenhouse trial as a podium for some holier than thou post to uh, shit on everybody else. I think it's bullshit. I think that post is fucking bullshit. And uh, how, when do we stop with this? There's a picture that uh, 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 Steven Crowder has a fight like hell shirt with a, uh, with a uh, profile of, of George Washington. Does that mean he owes money to the Washington family and all of their, whoever their, their descendants are because of the pain and suffering that the Washingtons went through? I just, I find that post, to be pointless. There was no reason to make that post other than to make yourself feel like you're up here and everybody else is down here. So I think that post is bullshit. I think that anybody who I think that anybody who looks at that post and thinks that it is somehow or another righteous, you need to really look at everything you've ever done in life and you owe anybody anything for anything you've ever gained, learned or done because that's what he's saying is that is that to take advantage of anything that isn't yours that wasn't originally yours to take advantage of that to do anything with that that benefits you that you somehow or another owe so owe somebody something else so yeah fuck that post all right so now the uh that that don't tread on that don't tread on me we the people holster coming up here without one in the chamber. That's all I gotta do with that one. Like I said, it's like it's just like my uh, gray one from him and uh, I didn't have to adjust the retention on it. Nothing. That uh, they're just good holsters man. Just good holsters. Alright guys, so the sun is going down about 40 more minutes. Uh, I'm just been doing a little a little bit of shooting. Not much. There's a guy right over here that took up a spot. Came over to ask about uh, if I was, you know, if he was gonna be in my way shooting or anything like that. And I told him no, you know, the direction I was shooting. And uh Brand new to shooting. Just bought his, just bought, I, from what I understand, just bought his first pistol and it was a Polymer 80. Fancy that. And his Polymer 80 feels just like this. Very gritty, very crappy take up with a very mushy trigger press. And so, uh, yeah, 
I, I don't know what's going on, but uh, he, yeah, he's having the same issues I'm having. Right now he's sighting in his red dot and asked me if I had any uh, pointers for that. And I, you know, basically just told him take as much of the input, take as much as you, of your input out of it. So rest it and things like that. Um, and then once it's zeroed, stand up shoot it from a standing position and know that if it's off it's because of you not because of the red dot and if it's off then you need to work on you and uh, he took that well and uh, we went through about an basically a one hour training session uh, of grip you know the fundamentals grip sight picture trigger control flat presentation recoil management things like that we shot my target a little bit just a little bit and uh, you know, I showed him where the shots would land if, if uh, you know, if you're too weak on your left, too weak on your right, if you're squeezing too much, um, if your recoil, you know, if, if your if your grip's not tight enough, your recoil mitigation isn't good enough, uh, all those things. So hopefully, learn something. Hopefully, he's over there uh, getting some reps in and and uh, getting everything figured out. But now that the winds died down a little bit, sun's going down. Uh, let's open this up. Let's see if I can get the camera down here. Yeah, let's open this up. I've been shooting my the nine millimeter I've been shooting today is Freedom Munitions. I usually don't do reloads, but they're pretty they're pretty good about their stuff. And then of course, well, this is tool ammo, not wolf. But uh, let's start getting this set up. Night will be falling soon. It's already behind the mountain, so that means it will be dark very soon. Comes with an extra eyepiece for a longer eyepiece. Here's the unit itself, the IR light. Am I in frame here? Yeah. The IR light, the laser, it's adjustable. This is the clamp. Of course, you can take this off to use as a handheld uh, tripod mount focus ring, uh, diopter, and all the buttons for zoom and laser, the OK button, and also record, um, menu, IR or color, and then the power button. But uh, what I'm going to do, go ahead and slide this guy on. And see if I can line it up. Tighten it down. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and see if the reticle's straight. reticle is straight it's out of focus like crazy but it's straight and there we go get everything focused in that's pretty good you probably can't see it but yeah that is pretty good. Reticle looks pretty straight in there. So, go ahead and turn it off. And it is set up and ready to rock and roll for the evening. Let's get you back up here. It does get in the way of your hat. It does get in the way of your hat. So it's either no hat, a boonie, or backwards. But it comes with comes with the extra eyepiece and various. Here's a bag for it, and then these are different clamps for different size, uh, different size 
scopes and then a charging cord and some electrical tape that I don't know what the why this is why we got this with it doesn't say in the book that I know of but uh, that's it and then the tool it is rechargeable came with its own battery um, 18650 flat top battery and uh, yeah so far I like it all right guys it is as you can see almost dark now I want to show you the light that I've been carrying all day not that you can see it in the dark but this is the v, uh, the BSS VBSS BSS V4 this is the through night BSS V4 it has a little bit of a weird pattern because it has a uh, has a defensive cowling on it but uh, there we go check that guy out I mean that's it's a pretty impressive light something like a 260 meter beam 2500 lumens is what they say um, I screw that end on I've been carrying it for since it's in the pocket I've been carrying it for defensive um, but it has a low setting what they call firefly I think that's it yeah that's the firefly setting right and then scrolling through right and then that's high and then this is turbo Whew, moth this is turbo pretty cool light pretty it also has a strobe on it but the strobe you have to press see one two three one two three yeah and then it remembers their last setting so if I go firefly right it remembers firefly because it has this little button on the side here and it also has see if I reflect the light a little bit but it has a button on the back too so that's firefly good for around the house good for normal use tons of hours on it medium high and then if I use that side button it remembers the setting if I use the back button it's turbo all the time so that's pretty cool that's a pretty cool light and it is just about dark enough to start doing night vision Let me how does that look okay I can use that for a light camera light I can use this for a camera light um, when doing that all right I know you can't see anything but it does have a laser it's a visible laser but you can see that laser through the scope and it's adjustable so it does have a laser for hunting target marking a target and all that go ahead and shut this off for now I did shoot a couple rounds with it I know it's dark and you can't see me but um, I did shoot a couple rounds with it and so far it's held up to the recoil of at least a two two three all right so there's some people up there on the hill on the little mountain in front of me in what looks like a truck or a four by four or some sort I just had to yell at him said I'm gonna start shooting you might want to get off there <clears throat> they're slowly moving down
right guys so i am packed up ready to leave i'm using that through night to light up the whole truck right now um has been a been a good day been out here for like six hours now over six hours <clears throat> but got all the filming i needed to get done i realized this last part of the video was a little touch and go but uh good day i hope it entertained you and giving you some stuff to look forward to that I have going on. Uh, I'm gonna go home. I haven't eaten anything all day. I'm gonna go home and get something to eat. Otherwise, you guys know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you made it to this point. Uh, if you did make it to this point, thank you very much. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, there's all kinds of ways to do so. Patreon's the easiest one, and to my patrons, you guys, are awesome you guys are really what drives the channel at this point I couldn't afford to do this without you uh, so you guys are awesome uh, if you want to see future videos from me hit that notification bell of course and uh, I guess that's it good night guys it's been fun but I gotta go we'll talk to y'all later